I'd now like to call on the uh, Denise Cole. Thank you. I think I'd like to start this with saying I struggled a lot with uh, coming and making a presentation. I'm involved in a lot of different things through work as well as volunteer. And uh, uh, I've struggled a lot since all of this has begun on uh, I need to play a role. And I've struggled with what that role should be. And I, I've spent a lot of time soul searching of what that role should be. Uh, when I moved back to Labrador a little over two years ago, it was a cultural calling, if you will. Uh, I was doing a lot of nonprofit work, and I was watching how grassroots community development can happen and was mentored by some of the best who uh, took me on a cultural journey, if you will. And in that journey, I learned that I have a people and I have a root, and uh, I wasn't contributing to that, and I needed to be a part of that. So I came back to Labrador very much to that journey, to finding my elders, to reconnecting myself to a land that helped me survive in my younger years growing up on the south coast of Labrador where resources were very limited <clears throat> and uh, struggles that came from that for myself growing up in that environment, uh, not understanding that I was Aboriginal, not understanding that there was this need, this connection to the ocean, to the land that I couldn't explain and I, I ran from that a long time. And because of those lack of resources within that south coast community, I, uh, because of the work I do now, I can open up and say that before I was 13, I tried to commit suicide about three times. I, uh, I heard a lot of people come into my community and talk about how things could be better. I remember being probably 11 years old and Bill Rumpke coming through with Clyde Wells and coming into my classroom and talking to me about roads and about electricity and about services and about our clinic that my mother worked at for 15 years and left because she had to go to the hospital herself and lost all of her sonority when she went to work here in Goose Bay at the same health agency. I had many struggles the past few weeks as all of this has been happening, and I knew I had to say something. So I come to you not from work, not from volunteer. I am a Labrador woman, and I wanted to have this chance. And I like to think I speak for some other Labradorians, but I know there's a lot of opinions out there. Uh, I have been saturated and overdosed in information. I have asked so many questions to so many different individuals. I want to get a holistic understanding of what all of this means. And I came back and I sort of started jotting notes. And right till this morning of, of arguing with myself if I would come and do this. So the notes that I have that I'll, I'll share with you. The first thing is that the river is a symbol. And it's a story of loss on a greater scale for Labrador. And we put all of our energy and our thoughts into calling it about this river. This river has cultural and historic and spiritual and environmental significance but it is a symbol for a greater tragedy that has been happening in Labrador since I've known myself to be a Labradorian and many Labradorians well before me. That the accountability for all of this is what keeps coming back to me. The federal and provincial government's accountability to the Labrador people and the decisions that they're making and that they're going on TV and they're talking about there's decisions being made behind closed doors that have nothing to do with Labradorians. And we have watched this happen time and time and time again. And I feel like, again, there's a Bill Rumpke or a Clyde Wells in the room saying, this is what we'll promise you. I'm 35 years old now. We opened up our road last year. I can't tell you the level of sickness that I feel because of the youth that I've watched because I left when I was 16 and told my mother, if you don't get me out, you will bury me before this year is out. And I work with youth all the time who are under the same circumstances with the same lack of resources. And I know that this is about a hydroelectric project. And part of me... I'm so empathetic for the other people on that table because they're all humans, they all have families, they all have homes, and the people who are accountable to what is happening aren't the ones sitting at that table. The people who we really need to ask the questions to are our leaders and our government officials who are making this decision without properly looking at us, the capacity to meet needs, 
if this project doesn't do that, then why are we talking about it? If it doesn't meet the needs of this people, why are we considering it? Shouldn't we stop wasting a whole lot of time and money? And let's explore collectively, all of us, a way to make something that works within this region then, for internationally, for nationally, for us too. We want to see something that works, of course we do. But it has to work for everybody. The new exploration needs to happen. I work in grassroots development and I was taught holistic approaches. I'd like the panel to suggest these holistic approaches to this project and the recommendations that they make to both the proponent as well as the government. And if you see as a holistic assessment and approach to this that the losses outweigh the gains for Labradorians, then do not recommend this project. Recommend that they work, work with us. We don't want to stop development, but there's a collaboration that can happen. I'd like to tell a brief story, this Aboriginal story, about the moose and the river and a fly. And that there was this great mighty river and all of the animals benefited from it. And there was no social class within the animals. The river was used freely and all shared equally. And a big moose came to the river and started fighting with the animals over the river. And even the bear and the eagle were afraid of this moose because it was so large. And they all thought they were going to have to leave, we're going to have to move from this river. And the fly came to the bear and to the other leaders and said, let me try. And they laughed at the fly and they said, you could never do anything to get rid of this giant moose from our river. And the fly started flying around the, the moose and kept picking and tormenting at the moose. And the moose kept digging its feet in and creating more puddles. And so the water started to fill back up and the moose got so aggravated that it left. And I think the point of the story is that there's a fly here. And they're called Labradorians. And we can play a role. And we do have power. And I don't know how I personally feel about blocking dozers or doing those things. I don't know personally where I stand. I really hope I don't have to make that choice. I don't think that it should be in this day and age that we still have to do it that way. I remember from growing up on the coast, I had moved from Manitoba. That's where my parents were out working, and they wanted us to come home to our roots. And I was really upset because I was involved in girl guides, and I always hated it. But I had to sell off that if I kept it up for a couple of years, I could go to camp. And it was the first summer I could go to camp, and I was devastated because I wasn't going to get to go to camp. And my father said to me, it's okay, Denise, you're moving to Labrador. You're moving to camp. And I never understood him. At nine years old, I didn't understood, understand what that meant until I moved to camp. I went out to the summer fishing home of my grandparents where there was no electricity and we had kerosene lamps and I found out what a honey bucket was and all of those things that now are my history. And I think of those stories around that table with the kerosene lamp and there's history that you can't take away. You can't, we can't lose those things. We've had the promises of the roads that took all these years to build. We've seen other developments. We are still lacking in our services. We are still not connected as a region. We still have hub agencies that base it of one community in Labrador that service all of Labrador. We still have landlines. We still have lack of cell phone service. We are not connected. We have been allowed to be 20 years behind the rest of this province. And I listen to open lines and I hear about all the money that the government says they're pouring into Labrador. And I can challenge any one of those people to come and live here. And they see how we share guidance counselors for schools up and down the coast and hope that the, flo the planes will keep flying so they can actually go and visit while we have some of the highest suicide rates in our youth. The issues are huge. And I came back more culturally, community, environmentally minded. I have a pride for this land. And my grandparents still live in that South Coast community. The only reason they are able to is because they have 10 children who now pay for things and look after them. In order for them to still keep their home has not been our government to make sure our elders have been taken care of or that our youth are taken care of. It is still our families. It is still our communities. It is still grassroots. But we need more. 
These are not complex needs. I hear that word. It's the new lingo of social pieces, this complex needs. They're not complicated needs. Needing a house and a meal and a friend are not complicated needs. The solutions that we're presented with are what are complicated. The red tape, the bureaucracy, the promises, the saying we'll do a big multi-million dollar project that will increase services for Newfoundland and Labrador that Labradorians do not see. I could go on and on, and I won't, but I'm upset that my government is not here, and they are not representing us, and they are not answering to us, and that our Aboriginal leaders are given 15-minute increments to defend us, or some of them aren't even doing that. So I'm disappointed as that fly who's flying around in a big team that my bear leaders, my eagle leaders, are not standing up. Nelcor is a business. I understand they're here to do a job and they do it the best way that they know how, economically, resourceful-wise. We would do the same thing if this was our own business. Again, I say that it's the government who needs to be accountable. I know you'll make your recommendations to Nelcor, and I respect and trust that you will do the best within your ability to make corporate and crown responsible for what they agree to. But the real conditions have to be with the government. They are the ones who have the power to make sure this is done properly. And if they do it quickly and without proper decision-making and proper collaboration, this will become a problem that will haunt us again the same way Upper Churchill has, the same way Fordsy Bay has in its own way. I've been involved in the social scene and that social impacts. You've heard them all, and I won't make you listen to them again. I will just say that they are real. I don't understand why we're not talking more about energy and industry that benefits Labradorians. Maybe if this doesn't benefit us right now, this isn't the time for it right now. Maybe we don't have to do this right now. I've been talking with different foresters or people who work with rivers, and they tell me that for the coast it would be too expensive to put coastal lines in there, then there must be another way that we can get those coastal lines in. A Crown Corporation also has an accountability to the province. The province has an accountability to us, so let's troubleshoot. Let's collaboratively, strategic plan. We encourage red zones to do it all the time, community groups to do it all the time. I think we can do this as well, because we are a province that's so rich in resources. We can explore other options. I wanted to speak a little bit to the spirits on that river. My brother is one of them. He passed away on that river in 1993, down swimming with his friends. I have never been to the part where he actually drowned. And that's my own. My own demons are there. But I have a great respect for that water. I know many other spirits travel along those riverbanks. Just since I've been living home in Labrador, I've seen the loss of life on that river. Families still looking for lives that were lost on that river. There's something about going up to that space up in Muskrat Falls that's powerful for anyone who's there. Because I believe those spirits still float. We are a cultural people. We know our energy recycles right back into the land that we love. My Inuit and Métis roots, past and present, have traveled, hunted, and enjoyed the creation that these that will be affected by these reach or by this project. I asked Nelcor to commit to having a social, environmental, and cultural conscious in how it proceeds with this project to work with Labradorians, and a lot could be achieved. The real people I, that I have question for aren't here. So I ask you as a panel, I ask you to force those powers to answer for us, or answer to us, sorry. So my request to this panel is do everything in your power to make government accountable to all people, all groups, all Labradorians in this project. By doing this, NELCOR will be accountable through monitoring. If we have to do this, let's do this right, and let's do it fairly. I put a comment on my Facebook this morning that if Labrador could scream out, that she'd scream out equality today, because that's what we want. We want a fair chance, and our land to have a fair chance And if we can do that, and if we can work together, then there has to be a way that we can find something that works for everybody. All about compromise, but not compromise to the point where I feel I have to sell my soul. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak.
Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Cole. Uh, just want to make a, a couple uh, for your, your very obviously very personal and very uh, uh, deeply felt uh, feelings. Um, you mentioned at one stage about the panel making recommendations to Nalcor, and that may have been a mistake, but I just wanted to uh, elaborate a little bit upon the, the, the role of the panel. Uh, the, the, the panel has the responsibility of uh, making recommendations on all aspects of the environmental assessment and for given the rationale and reasons for, for its recommendations, etc. But in addition to that, the panel has a responsibility to report on what it's heard uh, from the communities, from participants, from NALCOR, and from others. So part of our report will be a representation of what we've heard at the various uh, meetings and testimonies such as yours, and part will be on the conclusions and the recommendations that we've made with respect to the impacts of the project, etc. And our recommendations will be made to the two governments, and the governments will make the report public. So you'll, you'll see what the panel has recommended. After that, it's the governments that go ahead and, and make their decisions with respect to the project. So I just wanted to, to clarify that, uh, if, if that would uh, be helpful. I'm wondering, are there any questions, anybody? Uh, if not, I'd like to thank you again very much for your, for your presentation.